Hey everyone, as promised, we're going to have a look at the Miserable Offender Library. I said a brief look. I think this might be a little more than brief, but I'll try not to have it be really, really long. But anyways, uh, this little card table here, this is kind of something that built up over time with me adding some shelves and like to maybe someday make something better, but yeah, we'll see if that happens. Uh, this is where I tend to sit to read, to pray, to read the Bible, uh, that kind of thing, especially in the morning. So this is where things tend to be that I use more frequently. And you can see, uh, got, so right away, here's a 1928 book of common prayer. It's my usual prayer book I use, the American and I've also got, this is a New Coverdale Psalter. That's been the Psalter I've been using recently, uh, which I'm really liking. I'm really liking the translation and how it has the feel of the Coverdale while using um, more contemporary English. Uh, let's see, nearby, well, we got the weather radio because the weather's been kind of crazy lately. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, I had things. Moved around here earlier. This is my CSB single column reference. That's uh, kind of been my go-to Bible and lately, and I think more and more is kind of becoming my my go-to. Uh, I like the translation. I like the layout. Uh, I just yeah really like that Bible. And on top is a an Oxford King James, which I've been reading Gospel of Mark in that recently, so it's sitting on top. Got a pencil sharpener and a Bluetooth speaker. There's a there's my Noab 5. That's kind of my go-to NRSV. Uh, and just to give me uh, some notes that are a little bit different than than uh, what I find in a lot of other study Bibles. I like to have a, a variety of views and perspectives. Uh, next to that is one of my true favorites, the NLT Study Bible. I think people would perhaps assume that's kind of a simplified study Bible because it's the NLT, but the notes in it are really excellent. Um, a lot of background and cultural things and language. Uh, yeah, it's a great study Bible. Uh, so even when I'm not using it, like sometimes I'll read, say, the NRSV or CSV, and then I'll, well, let me read that again in the NLT and see what the notes in here say. It, it's I turn to it a lot. Um, I have it in Logos as well. So I can pull it up on my phone if I don't have this handy. Uh, Diary of Private Prayer by John, I think it's Bailey. Um, just started using this not long ago and haven't only done a few days of prayer in it, but uh, this is excellent. It's the older style of English, Elizabethan English, like you get in the older prayer books. So, yeah, I quite like that. And... Uh, yeah, there's some great prayers in there. See, up here are a few more Bibles on this shelf. There's the Oxford Jewish Study Bible with the JPS Tanakh. So that's not to be confused with the Complete Jewish Study Bible, which is a different publisher and is, a, I believe, a Messianic Jewish uh, Bible. It's got the New Testament in it. And then there's an, a Noap 2. That's the... 1991 New Oxford, which has uh, different kind of notes in it than the newer ones, and uh, that's just a really nice addition I got at a good price in the leather. Sometimes take that with me when I go to church. Uh, another NRSV Cultural Background Study Bible. I also have that in the King, or uh, sorry, the New King James, which uh, Mrs. TSB usually has that and is using it. Uh, that's another favorite and. Use that a lot. Great notes. Another favorite, the NET uh, Full Notes Bible. Not a huge fan of the translation necessarily. Not that I hate it. I just, it's not my thing. But the notes are excellent. And I refer to that quite a bit for the notes. I think I have that in Logos as well somewhere. Oh, over here are some prayer books and small Bibles, that kind of thing. There's a few BCPs, several BCPs, and some other prayer books. Some of these I've done videos on. You've maybe seen them. 
And there's some New Testaments, some New English Bible New Testament. Uh, ancient Colics, I have not done a video on that. Um, but that's a great, that's a great reference and great uh, book of Colics and Prayers. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a video on it on the other channel. But yeah, a lot of great stuff here. Um, I, I think I've been over quite a bit of this, so I'm not going to touch on it now. So above that, we've got, I'm going to stand up so I can reach stuff. We got the temperature. You can see it's kind of cool in here. Uh, we got the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible, King James. That's kind of my go-to King James Bible. I've got it in the leather. And uh, yeah, it's very nice. I like the layout. I like that it has quotation marks. That's very helpful when you're reading the King James. We've got Robert Alter's Hebrew Bible, the complete Bible with commentary. I've read a couple books in that. It's very, uh, yeah, very good. I, I like to see his take on things. Life Application Study Bible. It's a, I like the notes in that sometimes. Archaeological, archaeological, there we go, Archaeological Study Bible uh, for the notes. Same with the ESV Study Bible, mostly have them for the notes. Uh, that's actually Mrs. TSB's anyways. Uh, I've got an REB, it's the Oxford Study Bible, but that I don't really use the notes so much. I have it because I like the REB, and it's well printed, so I read the REB in that. And some more prayer stuff, Collects of Thomas Cranmer, I've shown that. That's a helpful resource. Be Thou My Vision, I have not reviewed that. Um, it's kind of like a, what do I want to say, it's like a daily prayer for, um, for Reformed Christians, maybe? It's uh, it's interesting. I like it. It's uh, a bit different than what I'm used to in the in the more Anglican traditions. But yeah, there's some great stuff in there. I've only used it a few times, but uh, yeah, I, I think they did a nice thing with that and giving maybe for some Christians who are a little wary of anything that they feel is too Catholic or Anglican. You know, I don't agree with that, but it, it gives another option and another kind of. Uh, a prayer book option for those with a different theological background. So, yeah, I, I fully, I think it's a great, great item. And next to that, it's a little dark over here, but that's a Holy Land Illustrated Bible. It's a CSB. It's got a lot of photos and a little bit of cultural information. Down here um, is, this is, you see how worn out the bottom of that is? I don't know how well it's showing on camera. That's my great-grandmother's Bible. It's an RSV, and uh, I'll show that someday maybe on the other channel. I want to get it repaired first. It needs, uh, I think, have a professional repair it. Um, I don't want to attempt it, but it's it's an early RSV, and it was clearly well-read. <clears throat> Up here is, there's an NLT um, journaling Bible. I need to journal the word. Next to that, those aren't going to stand up, is, oh, the Norton Critical Editions English Bible, King James. Uh, that is an interesting one. That is, I'll say some of the notes are very critical, like, oh my gosh, some of them would make some people's heads spin, and I wouldn't blame them. Uh, yeah, there's some things in there I strongly disagree with, but there are some very helpful notes too, especially in terms of the language of the King James and things like that, so... It's definitely a very interesting perspective, the notes, and there's a lot of supplemental material too. So yeah, those are a, a very unique item. Uh, next to that, something much more traditional. There's a New King James Version Study Bible. It's also been known as the uh, Nelson Study Bible when, in earlier years. Uh, I, I like that. It's a very just straight up, uh, very traditional, Christian, unapologetically Christological study Bible. Uh, I find it helpful. Uh, I got my only systematic I have in print. I got Michael Bird's Evangelical Theology, which I've worked through some. Got works of Josephus. You got to have that. Um, we got the New Testament, its world, Michael Bird again, and uh, N.T. Wright. It's a great volume. I like to get through it. I haven't yet. That was a gift and uh, kind of a New Testament survey. Definitely want to make time to to work through that. 
Oh, we've got a Greek English New Testament. We got a Septuagint. It was a gift from Mrs. TSB. The Lexum. It's a nice layout. We got another Noab. This is the old RSV Noab. Uh, it's in really excellent shape. And there's gospel parallels I got not too long ago, uh, which seems like a very useful um, book to have, very useful tool. And there's a great video I saw on YouTube of some professor had a video on how to use it, which was helpful. Uh, eh, I probably won't remember to put a link to that, but if, if I don't and you're interested, I can ask me and I'll, I'll find it. Or just search for maybe Gospel Parallels. Um, okay, so now we're over here. Over here we got a lot of BCP stuff. There's several books. Again, some of these I've reviewed, talked about, or used on the channel. A lot of, here's a BCP in a box I've shown. This one, this is a really great resource. I have i don't think I reviewed it, but I have used it on the channel. It's the book Common Prayer or Biography by Alan Jacobs. If you're interested in the background on the book Common Prayer and its Anglican uh, context, I think that's really excellent. It's like a biography of the book. I like that idea. Apparently there's others in that series, which sound very interesting. Oh, some of these others have shown. Um, yeah, The Divine Hours by Phyllis Tickle. I haven't shown that, and I haven't spent a lot of time with this. I've seen these, you know, the full volumes. I think it's a two-volume or three. This is a pocket edition, which I got at a library sale for a dollar, and uh, so I could check it out. And uh, it seems like a good, a good one, more in uh, contemporary English. Of course, the Oxford American Prayer Book Commentary on the 1928, that is a gem. I'm very happy to have that. Proposed 1928 prayer book. This is the English one, so England. And it has all the readings, too, which is why it's so large. That's a unique, very unique prayer book that I found. And... Uh, uh, it's almost more like a habit because I'm a collector. I try not to be a collector, but when it comes to prayer books, I kind of allow myself to be a little more of a collector. So, so I have it. And Piercing Heaven, that's a prayer book, kind of like um, The Valley of Vision, but I, but I think it's in more contemporary English. I haven't had a lot of time to look at that yet either. Reformation Worship, this is an interesting volume, uh, kind of a large, you can see it's a big book, large volume of Reformation um, liturgies and worship services. Uh, it's um, one of the authors is the guy behind the Be Thou My Vision prayer book. Uh, I think this kind of served as the genesis of that. Uh, but again, I, you know, I like to check out liturgy and prayer and things from different traditions and that's uh, obviously being reformed it's a much getting at some more different traditions and I'm generally um, getting into I'm looking at a lot of like Anglican Methodist this is going to get you like your Lutheran and etc so yeah that's a great item uh, speaking of Methodist here's kind of the Methodist section we got Methodist hymnals we've got a Methodist hymnal companion United Methodist Beliefs by Willimon. That was a great book. It was helping me explore my own tradition. The Character of a Methodist by John Wesley. That is a great book. And I think that will benefit you even if you're not a Methodist. All right. Another hymnal. That's the Hymnal 1940, the Episcopal Church, which is still used by some of the continuing Anglican churches, like the one... Name and I visited. Uh, study Bible and borrowing more archaeology. I like these kind of like cultural and archaeology kind of study Bibles because they give you like background information. I like that a lot. Got some Song of Songs and the Psalms. Those were both books I learned about from uh, Dale's channel, and uh, I was impressed enough to get them. And I really the blocks Song of Songs that is excellent. At First Enoch, we got a reach out. It's a living Bible, New Testament, and a <clears throat> 1928 Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. I find, you know, this is almost 100 years old, and it's helpful 
when I want to get some English usage from an earlier time, which matches some of the resources I use, like some of my prayer books, which are uh, old. There's some other prayer books on the shelf. There's a Canadian, I think that's 1918. Here's a 1928 American with hymns, ancient and modern, and it's got pictures for kids. This was a gift from Mamo for my son. It was very nice. We're gonna we're gonna get him learned on the prayer book tradition for sure. <clears throat> All right, down here are just some, oh, various books that I have found helpful in my learning about um, the Christian faith and in my own faith and practice. We're not going to talk about all of these, and you're going to see a mix of different authors from different traditions and backgrounds, and some that would probably make some people happy and some that make some people possibly unhappy, but <clears throat> I've, I've found all these useful, which is why they're on my shelf um, you know, big one really here. N.T. Wright's Surprised by Hope. Uh, I don't, I don't, man, it just really helped answer some questions and make, and help me to make sense and to understand what it is to be a Christian. It really set me on a great path that I'm on now. I can't, um, probably be thankful enough to Tom Wright for writing that book. Uh, it was, it was life-changing. Uh, there's several others here I really, I could talk about, but I'm just not up to it. Um, you know, boy, yeah, that's one of the most recent, The Hole in the World by Amanda Held Opelt. She's a sister of uh, Rachel Held Evans, who passed away. And Amanda wrote this book on grief, on um, traditions of grief, and on her own struggle with grief as a Christian. And... This came out not long after uh, my wife and I. We had a very, uh, a very sad loss of our daughter this year, and uh, this book just, yeah, it came at the right time. Uh, I found it very helpful and very grateful for it. And uh, there's things I'd like to talk about it maybe someday when I feel like I can. But, but yeah, I I went to Barnes and Noble to buy this brand new. I never. Go to Barnes & Noble. That's how much I wanted to read this book, and I was glad I did. Uh, next to that, we've got... Oh, these are the... Um, what do they call these? Uh, they're little, like, abbreviated books. Upper Room Spiritual Classics. There we go. So Upper Room put these out, and they still you can still buy these. I don't know if they still sell them in these sets like this, but you can buy individual volumes, and the covers are different. But they're just nice, brief, little taste of different um, authors. And so, we, you know, like this one has Augustine, Augustine. I'm never sure how to say that. Different people say it different ways. John Wesley. Uh, the, that's volume one. I think that's volume three. Yeah, series three, they call it. John of the Cross, The Desert Mothers and Fathers. Wow, I really enjoyed that. I want to read more of The Desert Mothers and Fathers uh, someday. But... So there's a volume two as well. I don't have it because it, every time I look for it, it's expensive. So someday maybe. And then over here, some uh, Greek New Testaments resources for the Greek New Testament because uh, I would like someday to to learn that, learn it more. But yeah, hasn't happened so far. I, but I'm not without hope on that. And, and uh, it's something I would enjoy doing, I think. It would be a lot of work, but... And I'm not going to show it because it's too personal, but over here I do have an old uh, church directory from my home church, uh, which which I am glad to have because there's a lot of people in there who, who aren't with us anymore, who I grew up around. And uh, there's a Cambridge King James little one. I like that one. I carry that with me sometimes if I'm going somewhere and I want to have a King James with me. All right, we got one more shelf. Uh, mostly commentaries, so this is pretty easy. There's some there's some miserable offender stickers. Actually, I need to give those to my mother. She doesn't have you think she would she is the MOM, the miserable offender mom. You think she'd have a sticker? I just keep forgetting, so those are for her. The last two I have. 
I might make more someday. I, even though the channel's ending, I, I really like, I'm really proud of that little design I did based on uh, Thomas Cramer's the painting of him. But commentaries, there's some really good ones here. A lot of these, so a couple I bought um, before I really got into Lagos, and then others I've, I got cheap, so I have them, or uh, most of them were gifted to me. They were given to me because I generally get commentaries in Lagos, but a lot of these are just too good, you know, and I, I think I checked it would cost me five or $600 to buy all these in Lagos now. So yeah, obviously the Nika, any of the, those, that series, that's an excellent series. These uh, two volumes on Luke by Bach is a uh, excellent, uh, well-rated, uh, I got two volumes on Romans by Michael Bird and Tom Schreiner. So it's another Schreiner. There's got Scott McKnight over here somewhere. Yeah. So they take up a lot of room on the shelf, but I I believe they are worth having. So and the that box there is my Skylar NLT, which I keep in the box because that's like my one really super premium Bible. Got some Oxford Bible atlases. I actually have three of them. I'm I need to go through them and decide on keeping maybe two, one of the old ones and one of the new ones, because they're they're the new one, the volume the or uh, fourth edition is quite a bit different from the other two. And there's an American Heritage Dictionary, which is huge, but I enjoy using it and referencing it. And I have another newer Webster's Dictionary around, but it's on a different shelf. Um, there's more temperature and humidity. This one tends to be a little bit off, but I I like having both and comparing them because if one's, if they get really far from each other, I'm going to wonder what's going on. Okay. Uh, all right, not bad. 22 minutes. So there it is. That's that's my library. I actually had quite a few more things. Uh, I, re I did a lot of clearing out this year. I got rid of a lot of stuff. Donated a lot of things, sold a few things. There's still a lot here. Um, but this is really kind of down to what I really think I want to keep and use. And, you know, I may trim it down again at some point as I give more thought to what I actually am using and benefiting from. But, but yeah, that's my library. Uh, I got a few more. There's a couple other Bibles and prayer books and other parts of the house, but we're not going to get into that. This is the this is the gist of it. So, so I hope you enjoyed seeing it and uh, seeing what I'm using. Like I say, um, this is it. This is the last video for this channel. Um, a few people asked, you know, are, am I going to leave all the videos up? Yes, I am. Even the ones that I'm like, eh, I didn't think were so good. They're going to remain. Uh, everything's going to remain. I worked very hard and I'm very proud of, of some of the videos I did, most of them really, and I want others to keep benefiting from them. Uh, so yeah, everything's going to stay on YouTube. And I'll still log into this account sometimes if I see there's comments that warrant a response. So, you know, but I will generally be, uh, like I say, I won't be posting any new videos here and I will be commenting on other people's videos and following them as myself now, not as Miserable Offender. And, uh, yeah, like I say, it's been a great, I've enjoyed doing it, and I, you know, I forgot to say in the last video, and I want to say it now, the number one, absolute number one best thing that's happened to me doing this channel is the friends I've made, the people I've connected with and heard from, just getting to know you has been the best thing. I've never made a cent off this channel. I've never got a free book. I don't take any advertising money. I don't, I did it because I was interested in doing it and I've kept doing it because I've enjoyed hearing from others and communicating with you and talking with you and getting to know you. So thank you. And uh, it's been fun. Uh, last thing we're gonna look at, I, cause I almost forgot. I just wanna show you, I've got this up here with uh, Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Yeah, that's something that uh, Mrs. TSB did when she was a child. So, yeah, very nice. All right, everyone.
Thanks for your support of the channel over the last two and a half years. Thanks for watching this video and so many others. God bless you, and we will see you elsewhere online, maybe even in person, uh, for those of you who, uh, who know me. So, thanks.